Hey guys, uh, I'm doing a little bit of taxidermy work for ducks, and uh, everything I've read says a feather flesher will help you produce a lot better result. Right now I'm just using a small wire brush by my hand, and uh, you know some scissors and whatnot trimming it off. And it does a pretty good job on sea ducks, but whenever you're dealing with puddle ducks, of course, the skin's a lot thinner. So, here's what I made. Uh, I, I went online, I took the specs. I can't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell you what kind I was looking at or not, but you can tell by the design uh, which one I copied. So, here's what I did. <clears throat> one piece of sheet metal made this entire thing. And I grabbed it out of a dumpster from a uh, metal recycling dumpster. Here's the motor I got. We'll start off with that. I got it from Granger. Um, 1550 RPM is what everyone said that you needed to look at. That's, that's what the specs on the ones that were already made. 1500 RPM is the magic number. So this is a 150th horse, 1 over 50 horse. It's 1550 RPM, 1 1.2 amp, uh, and it has the, I think it's called the override, the, the, it's whenever you put too much, too much pressure on it, it'll cut out on itself, that's that thermally protected, it'll cut out, uh, it's got an internal, if it gets too hot, it'll just stop, so you don't have to worry about burning it up too much, but the motor itself shipped to me here in Alaska was only 40 bucks, so you know, it's, it, if I burn it up, I can replace it. If, you know, I want a bigger one, I can replace it. If I want a stronger one, I can replace it. No big deal. Whatever. It comes with a little old teeny tiny short extension cord. So I'm going to I'm gonna mount some type of little thing back here where I have a switch on the side. Just be able to turn it on and off. But for right now, I can just plug it into an extension cord. No big deal. Flip it up on its side. One piece of sheet metal, started with the bottom, for you guys who don't have a sheet metal brake, uh, the direction you want to bend your sheet metal on the inside, just take a grinder and just grind your groove on the inside of your sheet metal on the line. I'm not talking about grind an actual groove that's about to go through, I'm talking about score your sheet metal. Take you a small piece of wood. Uh, in my case, I use some hardwood, some one by 2 Lay it where you scored it, and then fold your sheet metal, and it'll bend. It, it will bend the way you want it to bend. It's not a big deal. You can do something like this without a break. You don't need a big break. Um, the sides that are bent right here, you can look on the inside. I scored the corner. I drew my line out whenever it was flat. I took my grinder, I scored it, and then I folded it. No big deal, right? Uh, so the bottom comes straight back and then it folds over and it comes up. I just have my, this is all just for rigidness. You know, it's, it's pretty rigid. It's not too bad. Most of that flex you see is just from the bottom of it because I have screws going through the bottom to keep it, you know, rigid and tight, but it bounces off of the screw heads. I don't really care about that. I've tested it. I've tried it. It doesn't bother it. And of course, uh, this one is bigger than the one that's online that they sell. It's taller. And I may need to get a piece of 3 16th steel to mount to the base. If I do, that's not a big deal. It's a cheap, that's a cheap cost. Steel is, is cheap. Um, these guys right here, they just flex. If I want to change my angle, I can bend it just a tad. No big deal. Uh, the wire wheel is a very fine three inch wire wheel that I have. The hard part that you're going to have finding is the coupling. That guy right there that's going to attach to uh, the motor shaft and the wire wheel shaft. This is just a wire wheel that's got a quarter inch shaft for your drill, right? Now, the coupling that I got, I got off of eBay. This coupling is for a uh, an RC boat. 
It is for lining up the drive shaft and the propeller shaft on a remote control boat. It's a quarter inch shaft on the wheel, it's a quarter inch shaft on the motor. So that's a quarter inch coupling. Here's what you're going to get whenever you get that shaft. See how the lines on that flex? This is a flexible coupling. If you're going to order a coupling for RC stuff, you're going to get a flexible coupling. This one's about six bucks. If you want a rigid that does not do that, you're going to spend anywhere from seven on up to fifty or sixty, depending on what it's made out of. What I like about this one is the fact that it's got the two Allen wrenches or Allen screws that are tapped into the housing. So you put it on your shaft, you tighten down that Allen screw, and it's done. It's no big deal. I took my grinder, I took about a quarter inch off of the motor shaft and I took about a quarter inch off of the uh, wheel shaft. This is a one inch coupling so you know it sticks out from the from the housing on my little gadget here. Not too much but just enough. So that's pretty much what it is. Now let's plug it in and uh, we'll see we'll see how it works. Hang on just a second let me plug it in for you. I don't have my own off switch for it yet. It's plugged in. The wire wheel's going. And here's what a lot of people just don't get. Whenever you use a grinder motor, whenever you use a drill bit motor or a drill motor, whenever you use these different kinds of motors, you're getting too much RPM. And if you use that for a duck flesher, it's going to tear it up. Plain and simple. It's going to grab it. It's going to take it. It'll rip through it. It's going to coil it up. All right. Here's what you can do with this. See that? See my finger on there? Now see that coupling? See you can you can tell how the wheel flexes. You put too much pressure on it and it'll stop. 1500 RPM. That's what you get. Okay? You look at a professional one, that's what you need to be able to do. You don't want it to grab it and spin it all out of your hand and then just tear it up over and over and over again. So, you want the magic number 1500 RPM or thereabouts within 100. That flexible coupling, you know, I haven't really done a lot of stuff on it yet, but I got a feeling the flexible coupling is really going to help. As you can see from that thing spinning, there's not much vibration in this gadget. It's it's lightweight. It's just sheet metal. But there's not much vibration. If I needed to put a weight right here on the front, I can get me a brick and I can set it right there on the front. If I'm on a workbench, I can put me a clamp right there. No big deal. It's not too big. It's not too small. There's plenty of space in here that I can, I can work a turkey or a big seabird or anything that I want to do in there, you know plenty of room for it. You can make these right here, you can make them go all the way down the side if you want. The sky's the limit, it's entirely up to you, just put a little bit of thought into it. But I've seen a lot of guys with a lot of wood, a lot of equipment, trying to accomplish that. And that's, that's pretty simple to do. It's, it's not a genius thing to come up with. But, the most important part, is that motor. You have to get a motor that's not going to tear up your product. And the guys that want to use bench grinder motors that are going at 3000 RPMs, 4000 RPMs, you're going to tear it up. That's all there is to it. So, if you don't want to invest the money in getting a real one, in my case I didn't want to do it because it was $40 to get it shipped to me up here in Alaska. That took the price from around 140 to 150 put it up to almost 200 I got 40 bucks in the motor, I've got $5 in the wheel, I've got $6 in the coupling, I had the screws, the sheet metal came out of a dumpster. I'm looking at 50 bucks, you know, minus my time, but I work for free whenever it comes to myself. So there it is, you want a good overall picture, that's it. One bird flesher waiting for you to build it, one piece of sheet metal. No big deal. Don't overthink it. Have a good one, guys. Bye.